Let's go over and I'll watch the Lazy Larry video. Wait, what is actually his name? His name's Larry Czar, not li not. Why was I calling him Lazy Larry? It, it doesn't like that doesn't even make any sense. Today, I'm going to tell you all about the history of Final Fantasy XIV. For instance, did you know oh that Bard LB3 used to be the healer LB3? That's right. When a Bard did LB3, they would raise the entire party. Pretty cool. In order to unlock the job, you used to have to level another job to level 15. For instance, yeah. to get Black Mage, you would have to get Thaumaturge to level 30 and Archer to level 15. And not only that, but all of these role abilities here, they yeah. used to be called cross class abilities, and you would unlock them from leveling up other jobs and getting their skills. For instance, Swift Cast came from Black Mage level 26. So if you were a healer, you had to level Black Mage in order to have Swift Cast raise level wow. 26. And Dragoon had blood for blood, but that worked on all the melees. So all the other melees had to level Dragoon to get the damage buff. Provoke was a Paladin ability. What? You, you could only get it from Paladin. You had, if you played Warrior, you had to level Paladin. Or you that sounds like somebody who played Classic WoW and thought to themselves, well, how would they like it if the shoe was on the other foot? Yeah, how would they like it, huh? That's the first thing I would expect. You didn't have Provoke! This video is sponsored by Ragnarok Origin. Link in the description mm -hmm. below. Welcome to Ragnarok Origin, where the fantasy becomes reality. This epic MMORPG on mobile has begun pre-registration. On mobile? Enter in a fantasy oh, no. open world and discover mysterious, fun, and evil secrets hidden oh, in this no, magical adventure. Oh no, not mobile it's got game! infinite character customization. It's so nice! Who wouldn't want to live a heroic oh fantasy God. life? What anime should I watch? Do I still watch anime? Of course! Yes! Yeah. This is an MMO for anime fans. So if Ragnarok Origin looks interesting to you, oh my go God. visit the pre-registration site in the link in the description oh below and pre-register today. And they're even giving away a, a Tesla Model S. So yeah, I, I think that might be worth doing. And healers used to have this thing called Cleric Stance. I'm not talking about the old Cleric Stance that would buff your damage. No, 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 no. What I'm is talking this? about old, old Cleric Stance. The one where you would have to push a button and then swap between heal mode and DPS mode. Let's say I push a button. Okay, I'm in Cleric Stance. Now all of my DPS skills actually do damage right but all my heals don't heal so now if i have to heal somebody i have to pop cleric stance off and then heal them and this was freaking oh great you can tell people no man i can't heal you right now i'm in cleric stance yeah they should probably they should bring that back i think everybody would really like that oh uh, yeah see that's that's so cool that they had this stuff yeah it's like miss weaver monk or whatever and then they got rid of it. Like, I'm so glad to see that because it reminds me a lot of the stupid stuff that Classic WoW and, like, Burning Crusade had for such a long time. And then they finally got rid of it, man. Like, I hated this kind of stuff. Like, WoW had it with, like, stances for warriors. I've said this before. I always thought warrior stances were complete garbage. Like, I, I, I just, I never thought that they were enjoyable to watch. I thought that they were just stupid and I didn't like them a fun one uh gear used to have accuracy stats yeah. on it and you would need a minimum accuracy in order to even hit the boss yeah there was a different number for the front the rear and the side yeah so if you were a tank and you didn't meet the front accuracy requirement uh guess what all your hits miss and you don't keep aggro yeah so you would have to build your entire gear set around making sure you hit accuracy cap it sucked and we didn't always look this beautiful and amazing uh yeah in the beginning of the game we didn't have glamours yeah we we looked like this you know a so just chest. like yeah, this is just like raid, classic WoW. Uh, boots from a dungeon. Damn. Yeah. This one uh, might actually be the biggest quality of life change. What's this? Um, yeah, in raids, when you wiped, your cooldowns did not reset. So if you pulled and somebody hit hollowed oh ground God. and they needed it, and oh then everybody God. died, you had to wait the seven minutes for hollow ground to come back. Your cooldowns resetting? Oh my god, that's so bad, man. That's horrific. It's so bad. Like, I just... Why? See, that's why I always care about game developers. And these are the same people, by the way. Keep in mind, these are the same people that make the Final Fantasy now, a lot of them, that, that we think are just fucking amazing. And the point that I'm making with this is that everybody makes mistakes. Everybody fucks up. And it doesn't matter how great of a developer you are or anything like that. They all make shit decisions all the time because they're people and people make mistakes. What defines if you're good at developing or whatever is if you can recover from those mistakes and get better after them. That's what really matters.
and but listen and improve so much. Imagine yeah, that. And if you died, you lost your food buff. Yeah. yeah. Every time you died, you had to put your food buff back on. That's just if like wow. If any group wild. had a bard, which most did, just uh, like wow. were required because they would give a piercing debuff to the boss, mm -hmm. and that would buff the bard's damage. Also, there what used the to fuck? be three bars. There, uh, we had HP, MP, and TP, and the physical jobs oh would all work God. off of TP. And uh, yeah, guess what? Whenever you push sprint, you would use up your entire TP gauge, and you wouldn't be able to attack anymore. Pretty good. Dude, I saw that. Like, I watched a few videos. And I saw people with, like, TP gauges, and I was like, oh, fuck, is this another thing I'm going to have to keep track of? But apparently, no, it's not anymore. That's great. For casters and so healers, awful. though, because yeah, they use no MP. idea. Oh, yeah, and dying would reduce wow. all of your stats. So the more you died, uh, your health would get lower, too, which really did not end up helping your cause because it just became easier to die then. Overall, tanks yeah. had to do a lot more managing with their enmity than they do now. Actually, everybody in the whole party would kind of help out, uh, especially ninjas. They, they had an ability where they could give their enmity to the tank, and they actually had an ability... Just straight up tricks of the trade. Like, I, I love how a lot of these really stupid mechanics that Final Fantasy used to have were actually like WoW mechanics. Like, the, the, the losing, your, uh, losing your food buffs, uh, not having your cooldowns reset, these are all shitty WoW mechanics that Final Fantasy took from WoW and slowly just removed where they could reduce somebody else's enemy, uh, Fantasy uh, including the tank. Well, and wow, of had course, too. Uh, asking the Black Mage to make sure they did quelling strikes before they used all their explosions, uh, that yeah. was very common. Otherwise, the boss would go whoop and kill the Black Mage. You know, melees still cry about positionals now, mm -hmm. but uh, they back do. in the day, in if my you chat missed especially. a positional, you broke your combo. Dots wouldn't happen, the yeah. buffs wouldn't happen if you didn't get yeah. the positional. Yeah, it was way worse. Your whole rotation would be messed up. So this is pretty cool. Uh, Titan Eggie used to be able to be a tank. Yeah, it made a lot more sense. And he what had a health hell? bar. They don't have health bars anymore. Wow. In fact, there was a whole strat surrounding that. Uh, this fight was way too hard for the tanks at the time, so he would just bring Titan Eggie, and Titan Eggie would tank remove. Reason being is he didn't have to do the tank mechanics. But yeah, uh, score See? Energy. It wasn't just me, guys. I told you, it wasn't me at all. This was... Uh, it, nobody else could do it back then, and I had to learn it in an hour. Yeah, think about that. Did not like that, so, so they, uh, they nerfed Titan Eggie after mm -hmm. that. Something about wanting the tanks to be able to play the game. Uh, I mean, no, summoners back then that. were even able to solo extreme fights because of Titan. So yeah, uh, don't worry, Titan Eggy. I I'm sure someday you'll do something good again. So you know how One with day. Scholar, uh, they have two fairies, Aeos and Selene. Uh, you might be wondering what's the difference. Okay. Uh, right now, there's not a difference, but there used to be a big yeah. one. So Aeos used to be the healer-focused fairy. It did a lot of AoE regens and buffs. But Selene, on the other hand, was the DPS fairy, specifically because it gave fuck? everybody haste. Yeah, Selene was the best. Especially for wow. black mages. We, we freaking love Selene. Yeah, but she doesn't do that anymore, so bye. You used to be able to assign points to your attributes. So, like, you would put 30 points into strength or 30 points into intelligence, right? So, if you wanted to be able oh, to play shit. both Scholar and Summoner, like Dungeons whenever and you Dragons. swapped, you need to buy this item that would reset your stat allocation points between mind and intelligence. Yeah, wow. back in the day, you couldn't actually just queue up for oh raids in the God. duty finder. You had to go to where the raid was physically located with your whole party of eight people physically here and queue up at the location. Yeah, and this- I never minded that. It sounds weird, but I never minded having to actually go to a dungeon to queue up for it. I, I guess like, yeah, you don't really need to. And, and this is one of those things, but at the same time, what is it fundamentally? It is a waste of time. And I think Final Fantasy- one of the best things about Final Fantasy that I think a lot of people really appreciate is the fact that it took a lot of those things that were just these agreed upon, accepted wastes of time, and it actually asked the question, why? Why do you have to do this thing that's a waste of time? Because there are so many like vestigial types of content in MMOs that don't need to exist anymore. And I don't think people want them to exist anymore. And here's one, repairing. There is nothing that you need to, like, repairing in almost every game is a nuisance. There's no reason to have repairs. It's a gill sink, but it's, it doesn't cost hardly any gill. But, like, in terms of an RP element or anything like that, immersion, I don't think it really fucking matters, man. It, it doesn't make a difference to me at all. all. All I'm saying is, like, there's things like that, um, you know, like the threat generation, like threat being hard to get. 
Like, these are all vestigial things of the games, uh, of MMOs, that have just kind of carried on over the years. And I think the big accomplishment and the big success of Final Fantasy is that it asks the question, why are we still doing X or Y thing? And it stopped doing them meant that all of the raiders on the server would be here during raid night. You know, reset would happen, there would be people sitting here waiting for their raid to start, or there'd be people over here jumping up and down naked asking for a raid group, you know? Yeah. It was simple times, very simple times. And this would change depending on the tier, like this is where second coil was, and right over this way, this is where oh, the final coil was. That's you annoying. See this entrance yeah, right here? that's definitely annoying. This is annoying. where everybody would be. Oh yeah, and by the way, uh, cross world party finder was not a thing. You, you could only raid with the people that were on your server oh, so again dude. that's why all the raiders that sucks so much dick man like i this is one thing i think they're they're adding this in endwalker where you can raid and play with people on all of the data centers isn't that right so like if you want to play with somebody on like the other data yeah they are that is so good like letting people play with each other is just one of these simple things it's kind of like playing on different servers servers themselves are in a way vestigial too where, well, they used to need servers because that's literally how the game was uh, set up. Like, the structure, the skeleton of the game was set up. But nowadays, you don't need that anymore. Uh, not in the same way, at least. Because they have, like, cloud computing and all of this other bullshit. So, why have them? We're here on raid night, and if you weren't here on Server raid night, you couldn't too. raid. But, yeah. I mean, now we have it's a each full region, party which finder, makes sense. and you're, you're going to be able to find a raid no matter what time of day. So, yeah. ultimately, it's better for the game that's that way. It's a lot you better. You know how all of our raids nowadays uh, are called Savage? Better. It'll say Savage difficulty, and that's the end game raid? Yeah. Well, back in A Realm Reborn, the Coils were Savage. They just didn't have that naming convention yet. Mm -hmm. These were the end game raids. And when you see a second Coil Savage, these were super hard. Th their whole whole idea yeah. of making these was how mean can we be? And in these older raids, since they have trash mobs in between the entrance and the boss, you would have somebody join a party earlier on in the week to go in and clear the trash, and that would get you a shortcut. So that way, when you did have raid time during that week, you could just use the shortcut and start attacking the boss right away. We don't oh have to do- Oh my god, pre-clearing trash? That sounds like so bad. Like, and you know what that causes? That's like some people in your guild, you have them be the pre-clearers for trash, and then they don't get into the raid prog. Like, that's what we had back in the day for, uh, uh, what do you call it? For, for like our guild is we would have some people that would be put in for trash. And then by the time we got to the boss, yeah, literal chan <laughs> literal fucking janitors. And that's what they had to deal with. We never saw that. Yeah, we had that a lot. And it was really, really fucking funny. <laughs> so funny when you guys say it. I, I saw somebody in chat saying that, like, it was a bad take, that you should have to get repaired, and you should be punished for doing things wrong, etc. Um, I, I completely disagree with that. Uh, I, I think this is a, a weird, as I said, this is an antiquated, old ways type of thinking. There is no reason that a video game should punish you. I don't want to get punished by playing a video game. Now, I want to get better at the game. Punishing me for playing the game is not is not fun repair it like it takes it just makes things take longer i don't want my punishment for something to be you have to go back and do this again for an arbitrary reason this is bd yeah it's bdsm man it's weird keystone downgrades yeah it's like why like what's the point of this uh, you die that's your punishment dark souls dark souls is great at punishing players because dark souls people act like dark souls oh wow you know dark souls punishes you no it doesn't you just pull that. You go run over to pull the boss again. Like which idiot saves up a hundred thousand souls without spending them before a boss? That's their fucking fault. Dark Souls doesn't punish you at all, except for maybe Dark Souls Two. Yeah, punishment makes the success sweeter. No, it doesn't. It just makes me mad. I know. No, it it does not. It does not. Oh wow, it makes the success sweeter. No, it doesn't. I'm just mad. I'm glad it's over. I don't have to do it anymore than anymore because now raids are just you know you queue in you're at the boss and it's yeah. unfortunate but like these older raids like coil especially you can never fight it like how it used to be even with yeah, minimum item true. level on and no echo the fight is nerfed from its original state they don't do this anymore classes aren't, they, they are better. did at the time uh, that's every the same thing that happens with like uh a like project out, 60 and stuff the previous tier for instance in this fight a Raynaud, if it hit you you would die 
one shot, yep. you're dead. And then all of the uh, the petrification mechanics mm -hmm. in this fight, if you petrified your teammate or somebody else petrified you and you got hit by anything while you were petrified, you were no dead ass. how much damage it did, you died. Another really cool thing with this fight was that you needed to get a kiter. Uh, you see this tether going from me to the rain nod there? You needed a specific person. Somebody said in chat, I, sorry, I, I hate to pause this and snipe a comment, but I think it's funny. Shit take. And while you're at it, make epic flying and wow free. Remove all trash and raids and make the respect cost zero. Uh, epic flying should probably be cheaper. I don't see why there should be any cost to respect at all. It's just a waste of time. It's just, it's artificial friction. Delete trash for many raids. Trash is just a waste of time. Sometimes it's good. And like, you know, if there's like cool drops and like cool mini bosses for trash, but if, if your version of trash is just pull this group of NPCs and AOE them down and then pull the next group of NPCs and AOE them down and then pull this large NPC that does one mechanic and then kill it. And even if you do it wrong, it doesn't matter because it doesn't kill you. That doesn't do anything. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it's actually weird. Like people have like these. This is what I was saying. They have like this idea in their head of like this is the way the game has to play it doesn't have to play like this isn't necromancer title rewarding and fun because you get punished a lot for it uh, no it, it's it's fun because it's hard like it, it's it's hard and it's enjoyable the punishment part of it is why more people don't have it i think that a palace of the dead worked differently more people would do it but the reason that you have to go all the way up to like you know 160 spend like five or eight hours getting to 160 that's the reason why people don't do it. It's not because the content is bad. It's because it is punishing. That's why there's so little people that do it. Punishment is part of it being hard. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. Sekiro is a great example of this. Sekiro is an incredibly hard game for people that don't understand it fundamentally. Sekiro has almost no punishment. You just die and you run back and you do it again. That's it. You die, you run back, you do it again. You never tried to learn Sekiro? Um, I did, and that's how I know. Path of Exile punishes you a lot. Exactly it does. And Path of Exile, one of the big reasons why I quit in Path of Exile every league is that I lose experience faster than I gain experience, and I feel like I'm not making progress on my character anymore. Like, any game that gives me negative progress makes me enjoy the game less. It's literally that simple. Like the moment that I that I have negative progress, I ask myself, am I wasting my time? It becomes, yeah, it becomes a job. Person in the raid team to do this job, and it would usually yeah. be a summoner. So the party finders would always be like, need summoner, need mm -hmm. a kiter. Because the kiter would bring the rain out over here and they would slow it down with their dot and then yep. the healers would freeze it in place. And you would do that with four rain nods and eventually they just wouldn't spawn anymore. Fun fact with that, uh, in the savage version of turn seven, the rain nods keep coming and there's two of them at a time. Yeah, Holy the way shit. that they designed turn seven savage was they looked at how we did strats and how we cheese things and then made it impossible for us to cheese it anymore now Smart. in turn two there was this really funny strat uh because elegant oh Rock this was one too hard oh and nobody god wanted to not do this it. one uh, that's the debuff this that one was so annoying around, otherwise you explode what you would do instead was wait for the enrage timer 12 minutes and you would bring in three healers and you would pull ads just as it enraged what? and then you would just heal through all the damage that it did instead see charge complete in 10 clicks gotta wait for zero clicks 10 more minutes 10 more minutes oh my god Oh, there it is. Charge complete. Now we pull. It's enraged. Yep, this was much easier to deal with than doing rot. He just keeps doing this AoE over and over and over again. But you would need three healers spam healing you over and over to live. Also, more don't... Oh my god. I love strats like that, to be honest. I think they're really funny. Like, obviously, a game should not be made like that. But whenever it is, it's so... Uh... It, it, it's so rewarding. It's so funny whenever you figure something else out like that. In general, Bro, it didn't hard. always look yeah. like this. Yep, yep. There used to be a big tree here. Not video. sure why they took that out. Everybody would stand up here. You would mm -hmm. show off your really cool gear by standing yeah. right here. Or maybe even a mount, right? You're yeah. like, oh, I earned this really awesome mount. Yeah. Uh, oh, that actually kind of worked out. Uh, and you just sit right here with it and show everybody. But actually, the greatest part about Mordona was this mm -hmm. secret little glitch over here. What is this? You could do this, bada bing, bada boom, jump up here. Oh, um, a cool kid spot. Jump over this way, crap. Go over here, 
jump across that. It's a jump jumping onto puzzle. This rope. And look, now I'm on this rope. See, isn't wow. this nice? Yeah. It's just like Iron cool. Forge standing on top of the Great bank. Great view up here. Uh, but it's not that special That's good, anymore dude. because we can just fly. So, yeah. And yeah, that's it. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, there's probably a lot of different things I could go on about the history of Final Fantasy XIV. And that's maybe so I cool. Time, but for now, that's yeah, all I, I, I love. So I much. love videos we'll see you guys like this. In the next one. Okay, bye. Yeah, this. These are such great videos. I fucking love this.